blow, show, tell. Hello and welcome back to the Sports Gazette. My name is Alex Guilford. And I'm Caleb Mutombo. And we are here with another edition of Blow, Show, Tell, the show in which we clarify, simplify some of the laws of rugby. And if we can't do that, at least we'll try and talk you through why referees have made decisions in game when they have. Is that fair? That is absolutely fair. To try and understand the processes that referees go through before actually making a decision. Perfect. Now we are going to look at an incident from the final pool games of the Rugby World Cup 2021, is that right? They, Even though it's yeah. 2022, we're calling it the Rugby World Cup 2021 because it should have happened last year because of COVID. Now we're gonna look at England against South Africa last weekend. Forget that England beat Australia this weekend, 41-5 in the wet, superb game, excellent work by the Red Roses. We're gonna have a look at England against South Africa. Now Caleb, talk us through the incidents as you see them. Right, so we're gonna roll the footage. What we see here is ball carrier, white number eight is carrying the ball and white number eight comes into contact with green number five. Green five is essentially, uh, that's the big one here, isn't it? Um, it's her offense officially. Right, so she's the potential tackler, green number five. They meet in the middle. Green five's shoulder, if you look at the footage closely now, goes straight into white number eight's cheekbone, mm. right? The TMO brings play back and calls the referee about it and brings it to the referee's attention. They then have a discussion, Alex. Yep. So there's a process that these two go through and we're gonna go through that yellow card or head contact process. That's the thing I was gonna ask you because as far as I understand the laws of rugby, head contact is basically a red card. Immediately, no questions asked, but yeah. There can be mitigation, and that's what we need to discuss today. That's what we need your expertise for. So right. let's talk through perhaps first what the referee, what's the decision she came to on the pitch? Okay. Why? So the referee hadn't seen it. The TMO brings the referee's attention. There is a head contact process that World Rugby have put in place mm -hmm. that the referees have to go through. Firstly, has there been foul play? Has something happened that's illegal based on the laws of rugby? Yes, there has. <laughs> yes, there has. Thank you, Alex. Very clear. <laughs> right. So you always start a red card if there is. Right. And then you work your way down. Okay. Then the next thing, was there contact to the head, Alex? Yes, there was. There was contact to the head, Alex. I'm with you right. so far. Okay. The next question, since there was contact to the head, do you think there were any mitigating circumstances? I'll go on to option number one. Did the ball carrier significantly dip in height? I don't think she did, and she is low-ish to the ground, but when she approaches green five, she, she doesn't exactly dip, dip at that stage. Okay, so there's no significant change in height close before impact, so that's I a no. So, no. We move on. Was there a high degree of force? There, probably not a huge amount. Okay, because as they go into contact, they both go up and then they meet. It starts at the shoulder to yeah. the face and then it ends up being more of a head-on-head -head collision, yes? Green 5 doesn't exactly step into that challenge. It doesn't, She's okay. She's rooted. She knows the tackle's coming towards okay. her, I think. Good, I agree. Good. So we move from red card. There is mitigation. Right. Very low degree of force. We go yellow card. Okay. Happy days. Green number 5 got a yellow card. So we think that's fair, do we? We think that's fair. Okay, super. 10 minutes off the playing field for that. Tackle technique is poor, needs to be improved. Yep. But just for the sole fact that there wasn't a high degree of force at the okay. impact position, that's a yellow card. Is she quite lucky there, really? Because of the force. Mm. I don't think she's quite lucky. The law has followed to the T on that one. Okay. She should improve her tackling, definitely. And the referee and the TMO reached the same conclusion as us, I take it? They reached the same conclusion. Great. Okay. Perfect. Now, yeah. second incident. Yep. This one was not picked up by the TMO. Neither was it picked up by the referee. And it wasn't picked up by the referee at the or time. Or the two assistants were on the line. And as far as you can tell, the exact same thing has happened. Possibly worse. Possibly worse. Possibly. What's important to note is first incident, this is the same game, happens at exactly 13 seconds after 13 minutes in the play. So 13-13. Uh -huh. The second incident takes place at 16-16. Watch what happens. You've got white number three as we're rolling the footage. Yeah. 
go straight into green number 11. So green 11's tucked in off the left wing. Yeah. Come in field. Yes. Some, a couple of players have tried to tackle her, and it's white three mm -hmm. who makes, from the footage there, pretty high impact. Contact Sorry, the contact head. high up the body at very least. Yes. Certainly above the shoulder. Let's not speculate. Let's go through the process. Sure. I'm going to ask you the questions whilst you look at the footage, yeah. Alex. Has there been foul play? Uh, yes. Okay, so something illegal has happened. Yep. Yeah. Let's figure it out again. Was there contact to the head? It looks from the angle we've got there like yes, there was. So it's a yes or no? Was there contact to the head? Yes. Yes, there was contact to the head. Okay. Any mitigating circumstances? Option number one, was there significant change in height by the ball carrier? Green number 11? No. Not really. Was there a high degree of force in the contact? Another gray area. Okay, yes Maybe. or no? You're in the hot seat, World Cup, pool game, Alex Guilford is in the middle, he's got the whistle. For me, at the very least, I need to. I would want to see that slowed down. Okay, so I can work that we're out. slowing it down now. It Look at it again. Look at it again. Was there a high degree of force? It looks like there is, yeah. Okay, so you're going to go yes. Yeah. And what did we say we started? We started red, red card, card and we work ourselves back. So, so far, we haven't ascertained any reason to work back from a red card for white exactly. three right now. So the issue we have there is an inconsistency from the four officials. Barely three minutes later, almost identical offence, possibly slightly worse infringement of the law. Exactly. Nothing done. Nothing done. So what we need to understand is referees are looking for consistency and surely this was missed. What's important is that Blow Show Tell is not here to criticize or cut across the referee or ostracize the referee for the decision that she made. We just try and understand the head contact process. And the second one, there was head contact. There was no mitigating circumstances, so it should have been a red card. And they ultimately, they completely missed that. And they get away with game. it. So now, can you explain to us why this head contact law is so important? There's a huge dis discussion going on in all sports at the moment. Over in um, North America, they're a bit hotter on it than we are because of the. Um, there's been lots of uh, lots of cases of concussion leading to long-term health problems yes. based on the amount of head contact. Rugby is a bit behind it, but there's been a lot of stuff in the news recently. Can you just explain to us why this this protocol is related to concussion, right? Can yes. you just explain why it's so important? Episode number one, we talked about the three things that are mainly important in rugby and we'll go over them over and over again. Safety, safety, and... Safety. Safety. We want to make rugby safe, and contact to the head does not make rugby safe. No. We're trying to force players to improve their tackle technique mm -hmm. and make sure that when they go into that highly dangerous impact area, they're doing it with the right technique to not put another player's life or body in danger. Well, ultimately, concussion, in and of itself, one single concussion isn't the damage. It's consistent concussion on a regular basis. Con yeah, consistent contact to, to the head yeah. can have long-term injuries. And we don't want to get into some of the gruesome details of what that becomes, but we do know that they're still in the process of testing and verifying the medical experts. We're still sort of on the very, very tip of the iceberg in terms of how much we know about this kind of issue. So yes. at the moment, it's trying to take a safety first approach. Air on the side of caution. Absolutely. So we certainly hope that our officials will look into some of these issues again. There's no excuse for that one. It's three minutes apart. You can't really talk about fatigue kicking in later into the game. Maybe no. tensions went really high, score was still reasonably low. Unfortunately, that one was missed. It's a little bit speculative, but that could have changed the outcome of the game, ultimately, a decision like that, which I know isn't necessarily what we're here to discuss, but if you're South Africa, you're probably going to feel a little bit aggrieved. You're probably going to feel that aggrieved. England had, you, you had to have a, a player off for 10 minutes. England played the whole game with 15 players, as far as I was aware. Yes, if it was a close game, that could have an outcome on the yeah. result, but I don't think on this one it would, because no. England were miles ahead of South Africa yeah. in terms of the parity of that match but that's what we have for today yeah great let us know what you think in the comments below and we'll catch you next time on blow show tell blow show tell